Sometimes you have one of those weeks that just hits you over and over and over again, beats you down until you're crawling on the ground and realizing, ha, huh, that's not so bad. Huh, I could do this all week long until the end of the okay. week, and then you're done. You're done with it. You're tired of it. You need to change. It needs to be better. This is the week of my life. So I'm Dan, and I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting one topic at a time. People, technology, media, oh, we've got it all covered. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. What the? Taboo, forbidden subjects. I'll tell you. They're all on the chopping block, baby. It might come we up. We don't to popular opinion. We might even get a little bit dirty. Warning. This podcast may contain mature language and sexual content and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us. Have a good time. Open up your ear holes, because we're going to fondle your follicles. I can't see. I'm looking at myself. Boom, boom, boom. Mm. Mm. Ah. Welcome back to another episode of The Unpanders, featuring Right myself. on schedule. Yeah. Every week. Mondays at 9 and Thursdays at 9. If it happens. Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> like the full moon. Yeah. It does happen. We're not going to say it doesn't. Yeah. So, did you, did you say who you were? Do, who, who are I'm you? Nick, folks. What are you doing on my podcast? <laughs> uh, I'm Dan. co-host, actually. Yeah, it's, been, it's, been, it's always been a while. Ooh, it's been a while. For you, it's been no time at all. You just clicked the episode. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Fast forward time, through our time. lives. All the uh, all the pieces of information you don't give a shit about. Just click right through them. Because <laughs> we're going to give them to you in a 40-minute episode yeah. anyway. Episode 1 to 150. I skipped over all of that. It only took me five minutes. Great podcast. Now visit this <laughs> link. Five out of five stars. Yeah. So, hmm. let me see. This is an interesting week. You did have a lot to unpack there. Yeah. Um, this is going to get sad fast. Ooh, just, I'm now. Uh, it's it's going to be one of those things that just, you know, I guess it's just straight and honest. and f- Not fair. Not fair at all. It's funny. wouldn't describe you with either of those words. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Uh... <laughs> My family. <laughs> yeah. My, so. Okay. Throw it out. It is now Thursday. Okay. They don't need to know it's Thursday. Do yeah. They? Well, it's I'm referencing for past from the past week. Okay. So Friday, I'm starting mm-hmm. in chronological order, which I thoroughly enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> he does, folks. That's not a joke. <laughs> Whew, not a joke. I mean, I did enjoy it though. History teacher, I'm always in the back. Excuse me, is this chronological or not? Oh my god! Oh my god! Are you going back in time? No. Okay. All right. I'm done. <laughs> Could, are Are you sure this feels better? No. Okay. Let's keep going. Got it. Hmm. All right. So, dog, Pepper. Uh, Mitchell? That was, a f- yeah. She, I we, didn't know that, dude. Yeah. Put her down Damn it. Friday. That Friday morning. Oof. So At the vet? At the vet? At the vet, yeah. Okay. We're, my wife and I were both there. So, I guess you hear all the cliche things, like, it's time... Or like, yeah, it was the best thing to do. Like all that stuff. Like, I'm not even gonna touch the cliche things. I'm gonna talk about the things that people don't fucking tell you about. It's, um, I guess first, like planning it is weird. Like setting the appointment. Like if your dog is, like she was ill like a month ago. There's a bunch of shit that we're like, I think we should do it now. But then we stopped because she got better. And then we waited a month and it's like, she's like, better than she was that month ago. But she still How wasn't was looking. She? she was 17 years old. Good lord. Yeah. I remember that dog in college. What kind of dog? For the audience. It was a mix brindle. Uh, Beagle Pipple. Beagle Pipple, oh, okay. She had a, she anyway, had a good long life. She had an attitude, too. Not an yeah. attitude. She Did she used to go, or like, do a weird howl thing? I, I, I see. That's honestly, like... Well, because it's a beagle, so I guess that's what they do. She, does, she did something, but your memories of the dog are very weird. Like, because you remember them, like, towards old age, and when they pass away, you start remembering of, like, who they were, like, in the middle, in their prime, 
which mm-hmm. I kind of remember that, but like you get weird flashbacks, so I'm gonna touch on that too. Okay. So like setting the appointment is weird because like I it's not my dog, it's my wife's dog. So like she set the appointment first. I said she looks better. Let's not do it. A month passes. Like she's like not getting. She's like in decline. And then she set the appointment, and like I'm not gonna say like yay or nay. Like the dog is you know it's somewhere in like. Mm. But you get these weird guilt things of like, is it? You don't want to do it. Yeah, you you don't want to do it. Is it? Are you doing it because you're being? Is it convenient for you? There's like a weird like. Okay. There's like she's peeing everywhere. I have to clean it up. Like I can't. I constantly take care of her. Are you you killing her because she's peeing everywhere? Yeah, (laughs) that's that's the thought. That's that's just a thought. I I agree with you. So my wife planned it. Like we didn't really like this. Like we discussed it a month ago, but we didn't like rediscuss it. Like what to do with all the ashes and stuff or like what we're we gonna do like how are you gonna handle the body i'm already generifying it that's pretty bad but we'll get there generalizing um so we end up going and like I, I wasn't really hesitant i thought you know it's probably it's probably the right thing to do i guess my wife didn't like really think about it very much until it like you fast forward to like bring her in they like get the iv in her and then she's on the table and you're like looking at her and you're like, you know, I don't know. You f- you feel sad in moments, and then you're just like, hold, like making sure she's comfortable. And then like they just kind of like, they, I guess, white glove you. Like the the per- the technician is like really sensitive and like, okay, just like take your time and all that stuff. And then the doctor comes in or uh, the vet. Are vets doctors? Vets aren't doctors. They're yeah, I think just, they are. They have to have like eight years of school. Are they I empty? So. I, so I believe doctor. I could be wrong. I don't friggin' really don't check me. But if you go for eight years of school to be a vet tech, yeah. or not a vet tech, an actual vet veterinarian, mm-hmm. I believe it's in a medical degree. But I, yeah. sidebar: okay. Does Snapchat or TikTok or Skype have a tiny hand filter? I wish when you went like ah, and like you had little tiny hands, <laughs> it's like miniature hand, it lighten the mood. They should do. They, I can't believe they didn't do that because uh, our president, previous president, but um. <laughs> I can feel that laugh. <laughs> so, so my my uh, gluteus maximus clenching and unclenching. Oh. Can you imagine? Okay, I can imagine. <laughs> there it is again. Let's well, stop. Okay, so my dog's dying. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward. Oh shit. Okay, so the vet comes in, and the vet is, like, uh, like stern, but, like, you know, she doesn't have good bedside manner. So, like, she gives the, the thing to put the dog to, like, there's, like, three shots. So the first shot, like, puts them to sleep. Like, it, they're just knocked out. And we were totally unprepared for it. But, like, my dog is, like, poof, like, right down. And then, like, the tongue rolls out. Yeah. And we're just, like, okay, like, we want to, like, you want that moment so you could like say bye to them but they don't know what's going on and you also feel guilty and then like all these emotions and stuff and you, like we both started bawling and they start like and before we even like could be like like goodbye like you don't you don't get to say goodbye like there's just like two more shots and she's gone and you're just like holding this is brutal but you're holding like the corpse of your dog and you're wishing like you could have like spoke to them and like told them stuff and, like, people don't, I don't think anyone's ever, like, described it because they don't want to go into it. But, like, you really, like, it's fast. It literally took, like, maybe 15 seconds for her to do the shots. And then, like, I was holding the dog. And, like, by the time the dog's asleep, like, I could feel her pulse. But, like, seconds after she was asleep, she was gone. So, yeah, no. That's fast as shit. Yeah. You did Otis? Yeah, um, I was just going to say, uh, if you listen, I did an episode uh, where I talked about this mm-hmm. on The Unpanders. You can check them out. Episode blank, blank, blank. Yeah. We'll have the link down here. But, um, yeah, it was just really um, weird because the one thing we did was we carried him on a towel that had, like, blood and fecal matter mm-hmm. and everything. And, like, that's what we carried him in. We put him on the table and they... um. They were like, he's pretty much gone. Like, there's nothing we can do for him, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, they were like, say your goodbyes. Uh-huh. And they actually gave us the room, but the dog had already passed. 
yeah. essentially. Yeah, they did that. So we're saying goodbye to kind of a corpse, like you kind of mentioned. Yeah. So they, they did come back in, and then, like, at that point, you have to leave the corpse. Like, you don't... Yeah. Like, it's the weirdest thing. Like, you what do you do? You, yeah. Like, no, Yo, you want someone to, like... one more time. You want to... I don't know, like... There's just, a weird thing where I'm, they're like, laying there like they're the still room? alive. Yeah, like this isn't the last time I see him. Like just laying there on a towel. Like I gotta leave the room. Like there's no no one pictures leaving the room because you have to physically walk away. Yeah, and that's a weird thing. Like and it doesn't disappear. You you have to turn your back. It's still there, and you walk away. It's weird. My yeah, my wife was crying about that on the way home because she wanted someone to come in, pick them up, and like hold them like they were still alive, and take them to a better a better place or something. <laughs> right. She started talking about heaven like, and I was like, I don't know. like, I, I know we could have, that's the other thing is like, we could have talked about all this and like prepared for it, but that's not my, my that's not the way you my wife thinks. Yeah. And you don't want to think about death necessarily. So yeah. I don't necessarily, I'm not against no, that. I don't mind you thinking know. about death actually, but other people do. Good on you. The, um, <laughs> I love death. No, <laughs> wait, they, they asked us about the towel. They're like, uh, can we clean this and get it back to, you? Hmm. We're just like, no. no. Wait, it's who? A towel. Yeah. Like, I don't want it back. Keep it. Like, it, did it, like that didn't even occur to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't, it's weird shit like that that no one tells you about. It's really odd. It's just, it just. Hmm? I guess, on the grand like, scheme did you of keep, things, did you keep the collar? Like, did yeah, you yeah. I took the collar off, off and kept it myself. Okay. okay. I was like, this is the right. That's one thing for sure is the right thing yeah. to do. And you, like I made sure I held my dog and like got a big like sniff of her cuz like the way she smells like you you mm-hmm. remember that. It's burned sure. in your memory. Did um the pepper's feet smell like Doritos? I didn't sniff her feet. No. In her entire life? <laughs> no, I don't think I don't no, maybe your and dog had special feet. Some dogs do. It's a ba- apparently I read about it's it. It's a Dorito feet. Oh, it's it's a bacteria that some dogs have. Not all of them do, but either way, I would smell uh, nitro or Nash's feet, and they smelled like fucking Doritos, like literally like Doritos. It was kind of it was did they weird. pass that to their children? Like you held their feet together for the 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 moment they imprint on one another the de- Dorito know. smell. <sighs> just two dog just, feet you separate. You're just like <sighs> I just I don't know. I literally remember that smell. So that's why I was just curious. That's funny. Did you put your other dogs down? Those they were a big dog, so they don't think they lasted very long. Uh, yeah, I think Nitro was like eleven, and Nash may have been ten. But either way, um, I think my mom knew the vet, and both times the vet came to the house to put them down. Hmm. Isn't this weird too? That's... Did you know my sister's getting another dog, hmm. and surprising her family with it? Good... With the boys, she has three boys, age six, or I think he's gonna be seven, five, and three. Too young. You can go wait till they're a little older. Walk around the well, block. Well, they already have a dog, Molson, my favorite dog in the world. Oh. And, it, and wait, it's related to him, I think. I think it's his sister's litter or something. So it's technically his nephew. That's weird. You guys have a weird, incestuous dog family. Well, think about it, dude. If you know a dog breeder and they have uh, I guess, yeah. three litters every year and they're like, hey, you, you buy every one, like, yeah. <laughs> to buy all of them? No. What are you going to do with them? That's how you Free find them? the best dog of the litter. Just <laughs> pit them against each other? Yeah. What's that called? It's called something. Sparta. Yes. No, I was thinking uh, dog fighting ring, but anyway. Oh, no. And that's cruel, Nick. Wait, and I just found out my mom just told me yesterday she's getting a new one. Wow. I was like, is everyone getting a dog? Anyway, so yeah. They say people buy dogs when they're the most depressed, so... Corona. That's mm. probably a lot of dogs being sold. Yeah. I my wish I was a dog trader. About, my dog... My girlfriend's thinking, talking about getting a dog. Oh, great. And if we split up, it, it stays with Dominic, wherever, whoever house he's at. And I said, that's, that's a great way to look at it. It's a double package? <laughs> <laughs> you got Dom and the dog? I thought you had Dom and the dog. <laughs> Here's Dom's riding the dog in the wild, <laughs> like Lord of the Flies. They didn't ride a dog in that. I mean, it makes the book better, so in the movie edition, it's going to be there. Sure. Anyway, <laughs> that's that was your whole week, huh? Wild. Oh, uh, yeah, so the dog died. I don't know. It, it spurned a lot of things about, like, remembering what something it was, 
and like you remember the peaks and all these weird things like start hitting your brain about like weird memories like it, it activates something in your brain and you also have this like weird vision of like i remember like her laying like it, it it's impactful and like you don't get those moments i guess in short it's like the 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 friendship that you built up with you and the dog like that's the value like that's that's the value that's the most important part right it's the moments that you had in the past where you're actually like genuinely like both in your prime and like you like it doesn't matter that the person is is dead or the dog is dead uh like the the decline is not what you remember about the dog i i mean i would agree you could say that about a person too you're also not going to remember the dog like how do you remember pepper I remember Pepper just like she was two weeks ago sleeping. when she was almost dying and old. Yeah, like, sleeping ninety percent time. Yeah, one 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 week before we had to put her down. That's how I'll remember her always. Like you don't. That that wouldn't make sense. So th- you also wouldn't remember her as a super puppy because I mean you're it's a small portion of your life. You you almost generalize the whole midsection of their life. Yeah, like that's Pepper. It's it's also weird. Like, do I really remember those things? And the answer is probably not. The other memory that it spurned was that. I remember when my grandfather died, my dad's dad, and like I had gone to the viewing, and like he obviously didn't look like himself because they put makeup and they pose him and, and like bombed and everything else. Yeah, too. and it, it just it's it's like the life, the vitality is all gone. Like mm-hmm. the semblance of them is really weird, and I'm like I don't know, that was the first time I saw one of my like relatives like dead. Mm-hmm. So it may remind me of that, and then also my dad, like it was weird because like the way the way people interact with like a dead body you would think that like you respect it but there's no like people don't talk about it like they don't talk about like what what are you going to do like after i die like it's in a will somewhere and then like the way people grieve and like that's not shared that's not a like a communal response that's like it, people grieve in Individual. different ways yeah okay. but i remember my dad like going up like as just like I was looking at my grandfather like alone in the viewing and he like grabbed my grandfather's hand and was like look at this and then he like he grabbed his hand and was trying to move it around because it's like really stiff and he was like tapping it like it was like a wooden doll or something and I was just I, like I couldn't do that yeah I'd be too afraid I, that's kind of that's yes. kind of cool I mean not cool <laughs> it's messed like, up and also like it's messed up but also you can still be personable with a person who died because like I'm too afraid to touch dead mm-hmm. bodies. Mm-hmm. Like I'll do it, but very gently and very just yeah. barely like super respectful touch. Like, Hey, I know you passed. I'm touching your hand mm-hmm. respect. And then I pull away. Like I'm not here. Like, Hey, like I don't, Yeah. there's no familiarity between me and this thing anymore. So what I just kind of, I guess maybe realize is that, my dad probably had a moment where he was trying to like say bye to his father and then like when he probably went to hug him or something like mm-hmm. his body was rigid and stiff so like he was different he was yeah it's gone it's like the relationship is not with the body it's with the memories that you have so like i think that's part of what he was doing was like saying like okay. hey this isn't this isn't pop up anymore who i remember yeah this isn't i think he was doing maybe that for me but also maybe a little bit for, for himself him. but yeah i don't know you get a whole bunch of weird things that happen and then the motion side of it is like i guess it's like throwing like a grenade that has like explodes at different times you get little weird fragments that like you just like stop and remember something or you like hit you and you start like yeah it's a weird thing where like you kind of choke it down over time and it's like becomes duller i don't think you can swallow death whole ever no matter who it is or what it is even if it's a pet i don't think you can just take that all at once and really acknowledge it i think you have to break it down in pieces so that it's like oh damn that hurts i remember that and then randomly like 14 hours later you're taking a shower and you're like oh shit remember this and you're like oh my god that's fucking that's nuts and then like you you take more of it and then like i don't know over the course of years you've taken it down and i I guess the the dosages slow down there's very little left but you're still little pieces yeah that'll you'll every now and then get you and I think that's yeah. that's showing that you're alive. I think as you get older, you probably don't hit. It doesn't hit as hard. And the other well, thing, maybe maybe you have more. Oh, you imagine how many death grenades you're swallowing when oh, you're like ninety three. Death grenades. But also, my kids are two and four. They didn't realize. They didn't. They haven't asked about the dog. 
so Dominic was exactly four or three, and he pretended to know, but he didn't. I don't think he got it. Like they haven't asked like where she is at all. They're not like, where did the other dog go? I have two dogs, so like, the other dog's around, and they go, "Ha, oh, Kobe!" and they pet her. Kobe, yeah, and they like, right. they don't go like, where? Why is there only? Oh, not even. Did you guys try and explain it to them or anything? So like the mo- a month ago when she was about to die, we we're like, "This dog's about to give die." Her the tall. Yeah. Yeah, 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 let's. And we didn't tall. sugarcoat it. Like, she will be gone. Like, she will be dead. And they you were like, heaven? "You say heaven?" N- I don't even know that we said heaven. Okay, I was just curious. She will not be here. She will. You will no longer see her. Do you want to say bye to our dog Pepper? And like our our little guy was like, "Bye, Pepper." <laughs> it's I like, love that. They're like, bye, Pepper. Bye, Pepper. And then they just like take off running to the other side. Of course, yeah, yeah, they got stuff to do. They're busy. It's like holy shit. Like we as uh, human beings are pure evil. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, no, I mean we're pure <laughs> in the moment. I mean, yeah, no they don't know in their brains. Know. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. I feel like still hilarious. A lot of this stuff is societal. Like the way you feel. I don't know. Could be. We'll see. So, Angie's yeah. uh, uncle died like uh, two weeks ago now. Mm-hmm. But it's touching on a lot of that, and like just diff- the way different people react with the body. He um he was not embalmed, and it was COVID, and it was right away, and it was like I think they had this makeshift viewing with only like twelve people, like within thirty six hours of him passing, huh. and he was not embalmed because he was not getting buried. They were gonna um, cremation. He looked great. Oh yeah. He- he was Fantastic. actually the, one of the, just, he was the only dead body that looked like, exactly like the person. It was kind of weird. Huh. And then I realized all the other people that, maybe it's the embalming, maybe it's because over 48 hours, maybe it's all this other stuff that makes them look fake and bloated and flat. Yeah. Huh. He looked very good. Now, he also still looked like a dead body. So when we showed my son Dominic, we weren't sure if we were going to do it. Because he's, you know, he's six. Like, I, when do you? Is it okay? Is it not okay? Should we keep him from it? Yeah. We asked him what he wanted to do, and he said, "Yeah, I'll check it out." Or it's not exactly <laughs> words. Like, sure, why not? Gonna say goodbye. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll do it. it. This is the real weird part. He kept waiting on cues from us on what he was supposed to do, or feel, or say, or act, or look at, huh. and we didn't want to impress anything on him. Yeah, so it. it was both of us were doing a waiting game around a dead person and it was so weird so I was like hey let's go up and kneel in front of him and like it felt fake to do that but also it gave Dominic something to do like hey let's go up let's go kneel let's talk to Uncle Bill let's say goodbye let's say thank you and then like you know I grabbed his hand and I was like hey thanks Uncle Bill and I, I don't know if I was doing it for me so much as him Hmm. And then Dominic, you know, he said goodbye, and I told him what to say. It's not like he said it; like he was not like, "Oh, goodbye, Uncle Bill." I was like, "Say goodbye, to Uncle Bill," and he'd be like, "Goodbye, Uncle Bill." I'd like, say thanks for all the things he got you. Yeah. And we did that kind of stuff, and I, I thought that was good for him to experience. I don't even know, but we left, and like I literally remember I was outside because we didn't want to be in the room all day. You know what I mean? So we're outside, both sitting in the. Uh, in the chair and I'm sitting next to him it's just me and him in the hallway and I'm like hey buddy you uh you saw your first dead body today you okay <laughs> like it was like an episode that uh whatever that show is where the, the five kids go see the dead body he was like yeah it's okay and I'm like do you, do you understand what's going on he was like yeah but I don't think he did it didn't register I mean a little bit it did and it didn't so hmm. I don't know but it was you, touching on that just weird stuff. Let's have a drink for uh, Uncle Bill and Pepper. Hey. Good lives. Good, Good lives. Good lives. Ah. Okay. So that was my Friday. <laughs> uh, I guess the next thing was Valentine's Day? Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. And uh, I guess for between my wife and I, that was it was good we already like celebrated it earlier because we knew valentine's day was going to be a shit show and then there's a storm coming foreshadowing um but the one thing that's weird is that like i've been having a fight with my like my family my mom's side of the family especially and mm. like does your mom call you on valentine's day you call no. her 
She doesn't? Neither. No, I think we're not Valentine's Days. You just skip over it? She usually calls me and just says, hey. No. No. So this is the first time that she didn't, like, call me. She didn't even. So here's a real quick question. So do you think she thought to call you and said, I'd rather not, or I better not, or I I won't? Like, it's not like she forgot, correct? I think she thought about it. For the way she is, I'm pretty sure she thought about it. I think she felt like she was entitled to me calling her. Oh, and then maybe. I'm not going to. So I think she's like bitter and then like doubles down. Huh. Well, you didn't call her though, correct? No, I'm not calling her. You meant if you called her and she didn't pick up? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sad because I, start, I started doing that. Like my, my mom calls and I'm just like, eh. I've become with the stand. The, this is such a stereotype that like the guy doesn't want to talk to his mom. And now I think right. I realize it that like it's not like she's a good person and everything it's just like we she, don't have in common just about anything, anything. the conversation's not going to go anywhere yeah and the things that she'll like joke about are like cringeworthy and hmm. like uh, like anti-covid uh misinformation rhetoric. rhetoric yeah and it's it's not her own opinion because i know like she'll formulate her or own opinion and it. It, i like i like her it's own opinions but whatever she's regurgitating is not her opinion it's just like some story that she's fed and she tries to tell me it, and I'm like, you gotta stop, Mom. And then she doesn't get it. Like, she doesn't get this. It's like, it's just like wrong. Like the way she's like spitting things back at me. I don't know. So that was a disappointing uh, aspect. I think it's going on there. Something blinking in the background. Some kind of device that would let other coworkers know that they're safe <laughs> and their location. No? Okay, good. No. <laughs> good. I took all of it down. <laughs> I have them on the floor now. Uh, that's fine. Wherever they are, they can stay there forever. <laughs> yeah. So sometime, I'm going to skip on? skip ahead. Sometime around that Sunday, Monday, my furnace mm-hmm. started making thumps. I fixed the furnace like three times. Apparently, oh, was, oh, there's something, there's a cage that spins in there and blows air. But okay. like when it, there's a bearing that gets can get worn out. When the bearing gets worn out, it like goes like this. It yeah, shakes the entire house. Really... So this is like the second or third time I've tried to, fix that thing shaking the entire house it's been like a grand doing it but it was right before a goddamn ice storm where we needed the furnace to be on mm-hmm. luckily i have these electric heaters i had like four of them from the last time it broke during the winter beautiful clear glass that's really clear water at that. that's kind of cool <laughs> groovy oh. good so yeah so that thing the furnace doesn't work um Oof. and we had the coldest snap since like 1889 or some bullshit, like 100 years. It got down to 15 degrees. In Texas. Yeah, in Texas. Uh, in Houston. And anything else happened in Texas? <laughs> oh my god. We got to a little bit of. I guess when it gets cold. So, I'll mm-hmm. rewind. Mm-hmm. There was a time maybe like six years ago when it got cold. It was like 30 degrees, and I was like. I'm from the north, so I'm like, you know, it's not that bad. Let's just, like, check out, like, what what's going on here. Like, I went out that morning debating whether I should go to work, and I was like, I'll go. I drove maybe for five minutes around, like, the suburban area until you get on the highway, and um, everything was frozen over by the time you got to the highway. The overpasses on the highway were, like, surprise ice slicks. So I get to the highway... I like there's already an accident like across the way it's like okay it's a minor fender bender i make a right i'm like driving along driving along i go on the on-ramp the moment i get on the on-ramp there's like there's like an accident on the like the other side of the road i'm like oh this looks like it might get bad at the top there's so there's like there's overpasses on every every like um cross street the highway goes over those streets on every one of those overpasses there was somebody sliding like out of control on one of them there was a cars that had crashed into each other and one of them was on fire and like i'm just thinking i gotta get the hell off of this fucking highway and there aren't exits every every overpass so like every time i go over an overpass i just like start to glide a little bit and like I, like by the time you get over to the other side you're like and you like correct so that's how bad it gets is that you have idiots and then you also have this like unexpected like zero control zones on the highway so Luckily, this thing was bad in advance, and they said, we're going to shut down all the highways, no one's going anywhere. And, like, if you check the footage, there's nobody. There's, like, maybe a truck driving, like, one truck. 
So this thing, uh, apparently, the electric grid is it's controlled by capitalism. It's a market economy for like the way they buy and sell power. And Texas has their own grid. And Texas has their own power, like means of generation. It's just that's not instantaneous. It's like the oil and natural gas that run them. Like it takes a while to spin up a plant, and they're not incentivized to do that. So when well, the... I know, I'm just curious. I actually didn't understand this part because they're buying it cheaper elsewhere or something. Um, it's no, I I guess because it's like if you can, like you capitalize the profits and you socialize the losses. Like if you're gonna go through and then it's gonna be like catastrophic, you just be like federal government. I need help. Like give me money. Uh... But they don't like the oversight. There's like strings attached to like the federal power uh, grid that they mm-hmm. that Texas didn't want to do that want to do, so they separated it. So all these plants like they couldn't output the power when people are like trying to suck down three or four times as much power. Mm-hmm. So they just decided to stabilize the grid. They were going to shut things off, like shut off distribution to certain areas. Meanwhile, if you have like a variable electric plan, like normally. Um, they sell it like by the megawatt. It was like nine dollars a megawatt is normal, which is like nine cents per kilowatt hour or something. Mm-hmm. This went up to like there's a cap on it, and it hit the cap of nine thousand dollars per megawatt. Jesus. So wait, was it maybe it was ninety? I was thinking it was times by hundred. Isn't it nine dollars per megawatt? Or I think I did the math wrong. It might have been $90. I think it was actually $90 per megawatt. But still, it's 100 times. 100 times the cost. So, like, the people that are buying... Like, usually, if you have, like, a set fixed plan, like, you're fine. Like, you're paying, like, $0.05 per per kilowatt hour. Okay. Which is, you know, you can... Whatever. You can use up as much electricity as you want. You can make a podcast and get you all that for using electricity. I got you. Yeah. My electric bill was $40 higher because I just got it today. And, like, Hmm. I'm like, meh. But the people that are in like uh, there's a, like an app called Gritty, which is like you buy the electricity every five minutes. If you're buying electricity every five minutes, like in a day, you can spend a hundred dollars on your electricity. Wow. Yeah, and there's people with variable rate plans who might get screwed in this too. But the other thing that's surprising is that I guess there's two things: is that there are electric suppliers that have been locked into their rates that obviously are forced to buy electricity, but like they're going into debt trying to buy electricity, so there's going to be a lot of electricity providers that just get wiped uh-huh. out completely because they can't. Just, they're like we're bankrupt, done. Yeah. Call it. Which also I think compounds it because if you're a provider and you're just like don't buy, like I don't know that your customers know that. Hmm. I don't know if they like. I mean, that's what so I would do. We can't provide. Company. Is there a legal recourse? There probably is. So like, there's going to be a shit show that comes out of out of this of like, you shut off my electric. And then I lost heat and that caused me to have pipes burst in my house and my house Ooh, flooded insurance. So who's insurance mm-hmm. going after? It's going to be the homeowners. Cause no one's going to be like, how do Ooh. I, how do you blame? You have to like link the electricity going off to that provider. And then it like, be, it would be easy. I would think you'd be like, listen, the only reason the pipes burst is because we didn't have heat and we didn't have heat because electric company didn't provide us. Yeah. But they have to prove intent. I can't be like, I'm sorry, it's an act of God or something. Like, we can't control distribution. How how isn't it the uh, electric company's fault? Because they, they have, have to... the elect. They had the electricity to distribute, or they didn't. They didn't, and initially they didn't. Well, then wouldn't they go after them for not having the electricity? Like, um, what's it called? Like some the kind generation of policy on theirs. No, like a uh, if we don't have it, plan like an insurance, plan. like a class action lawsuit. Yeah. I mean, that's really what the people need to do is like class action lawsuit on the regulators who set up the grid to be this fragile because you get a lot of politicians that are like hand waving and it's like, no, let's just get all their money. I'll just, we'll just take all their money and then we'll make another one. It's but freaking wild. It's crazy. So what happened to your house? So I luckily, when I built the house, I had an option to buy a fireplace, which we hadn't used for like a good you know, if we had, if I totaled up the amount of time that we used it, it'd be less than a day, like less than 24 hours in the span of 10 years. Sure. In the past. In Texas. I yeah. understand that. That makes sense. In the past week, we've probably had it on for like, we put it on for two straight days at one point. Nice. And. What do you that supply was, it with? What are you using? Natural gas. We have a natural gas line. 
Okay. And that stayed constant throughout the whole thing. I was so. going to say, that didn't, that didn't, that waver didn't get disrupted. Like that. I was oh, fearful because cool. if it goes out and then the gas gets turned back on, like if you had like. Then you wouldn't know gas is filling the house for. Yeah, right. it can kill you. So, like, I was sleeping next to the fireplace just to make sure that, like, that didn't happen. There's no pilot or anything like that? No, not on this. It's not automatic okay. like that. That's fair. Plus, there's no electricity, so even if you had a pilot. I guess it wouldn't be on necessarily. Yeah. Okay. And then I do have a gas stove, so when it was really cold, like 15 degrees outside, I had the stove on. Did was, you? Yeah, full stove, full blast. Like, it was getting, it gets toasty near the stove, so it feels hmm. pretty good. It does a decent job of heating the whole house. The whole house was like maybe 65 degrees. Hmm. Like, the, the area that you were in next to the fire, like, the, the like they're probably like 30, 40 feet away from each other, the stove and the fireplace, in what, between what them, would like you, 60 something. What would you have done if, like, you didn't have this. Did. So you're you're hearing lots of stories of people like taking their grills and try to heat their house with their grill, getting carbon monoxide poisoning, yeah. and, or also like my wife saw people buying like fire pits, like they mm -hmm. must have tried to like they, I I don't know if they had an idea of like hey let's have fun outside in the snow with a fire pit or like let's heat my house with a fire pit, <laughs> which I think <laughs> legitimately is what they might have done. Not a great idea. It's not a great idea. We will say or get in a car. So a lot of people got in their cars and started them in the garage, and they Oof. didn't open the door to the garage, and they died because Oof. of carbon monoxide. A lot of people die from all this shit? There are like dozens of people that die from it. Hmm. I didn't hear um, numbers or anything like that. I just know it was bad. Yeah, when three million people are out of power, a certain percentage of them will, like, flee. Do dumb shit. And do dumb do shit. Weird stuff yeah. or, well, and it's mm -hmm. also 16 degrees outside. The other thing is like fleeing, like going to a hotel that doesn't save you because yeah. they don't have, they might not have power or water, which happened to some of our friends. Why don't people have water? Let's go. Yeah. Well, exactly that. Is that mm. certain people are having their houses, their pipes, pipes freeze and burst. The water level drops. People are also running their faucets to keep it from bursting. So your water level is also low. And then it's so cold that like main water lines can also burst. In which case, whatever you do in your house won't yeah. save anything. And then the water supply becomes suspect. It starts to change color. Mm. It goes, it goes like faint brown to reddish brown, and then like deep brown. It was so brown that like, even in like a, I like my tub was full, maybe a foot full, and like it was already brown. And then when I turned it on, you could see how brown <laughs> it, it, like it. the yeah, new, the new brown was, and I was like, you could see the plume like expand, and it's like, ah, uh, and that's just. They said it was, um, this is also kind of freaky, is that, like, it's iron deposits that are from wells that haven't been pumped in a while, so it's like backup water, um, mm -hmm. and that's okay as long as you have water pressure, but if you lose water pressure, you don't know, like, if things have gone into the, like, into the system, so you, like, there's a point where they say, it's fine, it's all right, but you, like, at a certain point, it's supposed to be, like, boil your water, you can get sick from this, and, like, you have to pay attention, like, if you have no power, no cell service, how the hell do you know it's time to boil your water. It's mm. like, you have to assume it's when it turns brown. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> if it's brown, boil it down, folks. Yeah. <laughs> but there's no indicator. First. There really is no indicator, because it could be clear and you still need to probably boil it. Unless you have, probably, like... Probably, correct. I, there's I, a boil yeah. emergency. Well, that's what the whole idea of the news was, isn't it? To give you important information like this. Now, um, news. without electricity... I'm just telling you, dude, that's back when radio and TV were all we had before the internet mm -hmm. like that was the idea behind them right for emergency information i wish there was a channel on your radio of just like people's responses being idiots and like trying to spread like their own version of reality instead of like you... <laughs> so like the internet <laughs> like the because with the internet you get all these people that are like they keep they proclaim all this idiotic stuff Q and like, on, yeah. which might be right, might be true. We don't know. Let's give it some time. Or they're like they're screaming like get out of town, or like there's a gunfight oh, at the yeah. okay corral. <laughs> well, at the supermarket, yeah. <sighs> and I... So are you guys? By the way, are you guys actually through the storm and everything else? And it's or is it still like twenty degrees down there? It warmed up to like forty degrees today. Okay, but it's getting down to like twenties tonight. And I think this is the last day before it goes back to 70s and it's beautiful weather. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy when you have three days without power, or cell service, or uh, water. It gets kind of weird. It is weird. 
like the things you can't do with that, like dirty water. You can't. You said you can't brush your teeth. You can't. You can't shave because if you cut yourself, then you just like get that dirty water in your. You gotta have a good shave. Our our ancestors will be proud. I'm not gonna shave with this dirty water. <laughs> um, I don't want a nick. You also like forget that you can't like wash your face. Like if you like washing your hands is weird because it's like. Okay, I'm gonna use soap to make my hands clean. And I'm gonna <laughs> rinse off the water. soap, and then it's like, how much of this is soap, and how much of this is dirty water? I'm gonna wash my hands again. Oh wait, it's like can't wash water. my hands. Yeah. So I would just use alcohol. It's like okay. dip my hands in vodka. Be like, okay, I'm good. You think there's gonna be a spike in COVID and everything? Because a lot of people probably, like in a poorer area, probably had to go somewhere to some kind of shelter or something. When it's that cold, no electricity. You got three kids, let's say. Yeah, I hope pictures of people like fully decked out in their winter gear and Houston's winter gear is just like one jacket but it's like there's people that were actually like really smart about it they had generators and like my two of my neighbors had generators they just plugged that thing in turned it on and they were pretty much good but also I can't talk about that damn it <laughs> but yeah if you had a generator you would you know I never thought I'd need it for the cold I thought I'd need it for a hurricane like for a hurricane, I'd have to buy like my own AC window units. And I was like, I don't want to do that. But maybe I should buy one now for winter. Mm. They're not bad to have in an emergency. I think my parents bought one. Our power would go out during uh, like really bad rainstorms and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the sun pump in the basement would go because of flooding. Of course, the best time for your power to go out is when you're already flooding. Yay! So. It's weird how that happens. It's like all of the bad things happen all at once. And, and they, like failures. But that's like but that's compounding. also like saying your snowblower dies during a blizzard. I mean, when else are you using it? Yeah, but the way things compound, I think I know. people are not it's... prepared to handle for like what if you didn't have any food at the beginning of the damn thing? And then it was like Oh, everyone's hysteric and they took all the food from all the grocery stores. And you look no. and it's like what are you gonna damn. eat? Yeah, you're, you could Neighbor. be screwed. You can't. The people can't even boil the water. Like if you get pasta, like you might not. You might have an electric stove. You can't heat that water to boil it anyway. Right. Like you might as well drink dysentery. Go right ahead. Chew on that crunchy, crunchy pasta. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna die brown from that iron. It actually doesn't matter if you call it gravy or sauce at that point. Put a little ragu on it. Chew it down. Ugh. So, would you say one final thing happened for your week? And you might not be able to discuss any details of it, but it's pretty funny. Yeah, so the 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 storm thing ended kind of today. And then I got laid off. <laughs> this lovely, and then I got lovely week. Laid off. I mean, I saw it coming like maybe two months ago, so it's not terrible. But it's still always kind of a... Yeah. It's a big hit. It's it's weird. I mean, I'm I've I've been working for like a straight fifteen years, so like finally I'm like okay, I need a break. But in my mind, I'm like, like by not working, I'm losing out on like gaining for the future, so I could retire early or something. I don't know. But it's a weird like I I kind of wanted to go through this process because I've never been at a company that literally went bankrupt before, and then we're like, okay, we're done, and it's really like. <laughs> The weird part is, like, for me, if I owned a, a company, I I would probably do that. I'd be like, we don't have any money. We're, We're done. done. We're done, guys. I'm See you sorry. guys. It was nice. We did a good job. We but, tried. We tried. Yeah. But here, it was very much like, 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 come on, Dan, you're in the core group. We got to figure out how to keep this thing going. And it was like still the same, it's like dog and pony show about like, okay, keeping it together, like having a, a core phrases. group. Let's do this. We're gonna get through it, like that kind of a thing. It wasn't more like a pep talk. It was more like, like what can we possibly do? And like the answer is like you should have just gotten money before. <laughs> like keeping it going. Like the moment you lay people off, I bet you probably can't get half of those people back. And like they've probably gone not. off and like done other things. Screw yeah, they're yeah. they're gone. So like you can't you can't restart a business after you not paid people no and then there's a the cost to find them b the cost to train them c they're going in on something they've never touched i don't know it's it's a mess yeah the fear the scary part was like i was listening to the call of like okay like if we really want to do this we'll just like 
like form my own thing, blah, 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 do this, handle all this stuff. And like, I'm the only technical person that's in the core group. And I'm like, <laughs> holy shit. Like I will have to <laughs> take on all of these tasks. Like it will not be worth no, it for me no, no. if it becomes like way too serious. If it's <clears throat> life or death for the company and you have to do all this stuff and adhere to these new policies and do this new tech and do this. Yeah. I don't like, I'm willing to like go if it's an easy sell. Like if it happens in the first few weeks, like, okay, like I can get you through. Uh, but I have not seen things move quickly and I don't think it's going to happen. And I'm just being a realist. Like I'm not pessimistic at all. I think like it takes time for people to sign contracts and that time is probably like a month and there's not even anything in the pipeline that's going to be done in a month. So it's like, what? like I understand your desperation and wanting to like keep the thing going that you've been like, it's your baby for like four years, but like, it's time to cut. Yeah, you just make it an easy, easy clean. Like it's over, guys. Like chop it. Yeah. Cut, 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 cut. The other thing is they don't even have full ownership of it, so they can't just be like, okay, we're gonna do this. They have we to like ask. Yeah, they have to ask other people what to do. Like, can messy. we not what to do, but messy. like, can we do this? Messy. Probably gonna be a mess. But yeah. what are you gonna do? Drink. Hmm. What, so, I mean, eventually I'll find a job. I just don't play, don't take a sure. bullshit one. I have a probably, I think, worst case is maybe I just, like, take a full, like, the max amount of time I could take is six months because of unemployment. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't wait that long. I'd probably do, like, nah, three months. Nah, you can months. do six months. Good Lord. Oof. You think I'd take six months? Go insane, dude. You would be a different person. I might be a better person. I like... won't disagree with that, but I also won't agree with that at all. <laughs> I will not agree with that. Wait, what, what do you think that. my spiral will be at the beginning? So this is the very the this work? is the first day, my the downward work? spiral, and how long? You say four months? No, Thor. Thor. Oh, I'll just become a bloated, fat, <laughs> playing playing video games with your headset on, talking to whoever else. <laughs> Hi, it's me. What's his name? Meek. It's me, Meek. Meek. <laughs> you have your friend Meek over. You guys be playing. Can play with a fourteen year old Kenya. Yeah. Be fat, have a beer belly. It would be kind of cool. So you think that's my my downward spiral? I think that's where it would end up. Yeah. Hmm. What if I'm a fit, sexy beast at the end of this thing? I'd be impressed. I'd be like, damn, dude, the fire is there. And then you'd get a job, and what would happen to it? Let's be serious. Yeah. Hmm. Life. Hmm. Sadness. Life. <laughs> is is life sadness? I mean, duality, okay. right? Yes, I and mean, you talked about death too. To begin this, right? Rebirth, rebirth. We all have a rebirth. Usually, I grow my hair out before a rebirth. Starting to get there. Yeah. Just saying. I'm not sure what vibes I'll feel. For like, I'm hoping I feel like summer vacation vibes. But <laughs> I earlier think talking about it, I was like, ah, oh, dude, it's gonna be like a vacation for this guy. He's gonna have a blast. But it's like 26 degrees in Texas. It's like <laughs> people are scrambling for their life. COVID is going on just nonstop everywhere. And you're like, eh, maybe this would be nice. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you're like You're like standing at the edge of vacation and people are screaming, running for their lives. And you're like, eh, maybe it'll be all right. Hmm. And it, it could. I'm not saying it wouldn't. I'm just saying it's kind no. of funny that maybe it won't. Well, roll that back a year ago when I, I think a lot of people, <laughs> well, I know a lot of people got laid off. And like I'm like driving by Home Depot and I just feel like it's a packed parking lot. Like people are doing home renos and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, wow, they're completely unaffected. But like, maybe they're just bored. You'll find yeah, me at Home I Depot like, a lot. building a bunch of crap out of this house. Or maybe doing it for other people. Like weird odd other jobs. people. Who cares about other people, Nick? Money! Because <laughs> they need the money. Not oh, I like doing money. Oh, And now you do. Money's good. Money's good. Hmm. Oof. So that was a good week for me. How was your that week, was a Nick? Wild week. Pretty good. I have this dude who's calling in at work, and uh, lately I've gotten all the leads, uh -huh. all the phone leads in the company, which is a terrible idea. I try and get them to hang up, but um, less work for me. <laughs> I spend four hundred thousand dollars a year on cable. I just need this wire, and I'm like, sorry, sir, and I hang up. <laughs> but this one dude who's been sticking with me, and I crack up. He, there's a cat toy. It's like a wand 
with a little silver ribbon around it. Huh. And it has feathers on it. And it's packaged. And he's like, listen, I have an order for 200,000 of these. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, I need you to get the silver wire that's at the end. I'll buy it in 36-inch increments. Here's the packaging. What kind is it? I'll buy it. I don't care how much it costs. I already have 200,000 orders, and I need these made like in the next few weeks. And I'm like, I got no idea. And he's like, I'll overnight you the package. And I'm like, I'm not really good at figuring this stuff out. I'm trying to get rid of them. And he's like, anyway, Nick, I'm, I'm overnighting it to you. It'll be there today. He, he sent it today, and it snowed so we didn't go into work. And he called me three times. And finally, I was like, hey, Sam, I got you. What's up? He's like, did you get it? And I was like, everyone's out, my guy. We'll get it. And he's like, okay, okay. I think we're going to get this through. I got a guy. He's working on the other merchandise. I got another guy who's working on this. I just need you to know what wire that is. We're going to make 200,000 units, and that's just – for the next month after that we're gonna double have you ever been to petco i was like yeah i've been to petco and he's going on and on this guy is hype mm. about it and i'm like i'm not gonna be able to figure out what it is i'm not gonna be able to get it in i don't care you're screwed dude <laughs> this is this is exactly what like it sounds like your company in in the sense that so it's simple. like it's so simple all he has to do is get this invention out. he literally bought this patent or idea or finished product from someone uh-huh. and he has to fulfill the orders yes little does he realize there's so many headaches involved what's the little metal wire he, he didn't got know. a part number for me he, he had no idea. idea and he's trying <laughs> he's calling me like i like I, I care i'm the worst employee at the job you could be calling a company and getting the worst employee they have who's like are... this yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. it's not your job to figure that shit out <laughs> it's not and literally they don't pay me that much so i, I don't feel bad Meanwhile, Sam over here, his his email is Sam CEO at whatever the hell his company is, and I'm like, oh Sam, you poor <laughs> bastard, you bought into a bad plan, dude. You are you have a whole slew of headaches you don't even know about yet. The craziest thing to me is, from like an ownership of a business standpoint, is I've seen it. I I never knew this because I worked in the public or public sector for ten years. When you switch over to the private side, it's like all of these people that are inventing stuff. They sell this like vaporware, this fake product that they don't have. They don't carry inventory of it. They just try to sell people on it. And they try to make them believe that they have all of them right now. Ready to go. They're ready to go. Yeah. And when they actually do sell it, they're like, oh, crap. And then, so they, they go they out. To, now they have to find someone to they, they do try it. and get bids for it. Okay, I need three companies that bid. I got the cheapest one and the quickest one. Uh, I'll go with in between. Yes. And then... They don't really check these companies, and oh my god, there's going to be an 18 week delay. Oh, I didn't think of that. I should have thought of that. They try to tell, like pull on all the different supply chains. This is exactly mm-hmm. why I was hired because they had a contract for like 3,000 of whatever devices we were doing, and they didn't they they didn't have a finished product. And the person that was like building it and doing it, like they were not going to get there, and they figured that out. So they're like, we need somebody that actually knows what the hell is going on. And a la me and I go in there like uh, this is going to take like six months and they're like we're delivering next month and I'm like it's like, going to take get... six months I'm just telling you guys yeah. it ends up handcuffing me saying we got to go with a like a slightly like changed design that will work but I'm never going to get to the next version I just get handcuffed and then like part of that gets axed and you're just like well like what do I do like I'm here to build you something new but you're not going to give me anything to do it with and it's just Correct. like it's an impossible set of like equations. It's also run by like marketing and sales and like financiers, mm-hmm. not engineering people. So like, of course. when it comes down to it, like, why don't I just do that? Like, I could bullshit own one hundred percent of the company and then actually do it. So like, like fuck the people trying to like like sell some bullshit idea so that someone else can actually come in and do it. Like, just well, so that's the thing. They're really good at selling. Are they? They did. I mean, they sold somebody on a bill of goods that was undeliverable. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. If it's me sitting in that chair and I'm selling to those people, I just I think understand. they're just taking advantage of the people that are like but idiots. You're not, buy- you're not buying from them, are you? You're not the seller and you're not the buyer in this instance. So I, you're just saying I don't know? Well, I'm just saying you don't know that how to trick them or how to play that game and i think they all play this game and then that the realistic part where do you guys actually either side know what it takes to build this no both of you are wrong (laughs) (laughs) 
why are you selling them? And he's like, four weeks, three weeks, two weeks, three and a half weeks. And you're like, this is impossible. Both of you stop. I'm the one who has to make it. It's not possible. And they're like, fine, two weeks. This is so, the this is and that have video. This and you're like, this doesn't make sense. It's the YouTube of like, can you draw me a green line using a red marker? <laughs> it's like, I've never seen this. It just sounds good. Yeah. I went three lines, all perpendicular. It's like, <sighs> mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 And the engineer is just like, I don't think that's... And the marketing guy's like, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I think that we yes. can do this. <laughs> He's like, sign this up for not, two of them. No, I don't... <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. That's what and every deal is. Yeah, it's because the people making deals are deal makers, not the people who are doing the work. It's just weird. It's weird to me because I I could crush it as a salesman. I'm pretty sure. I don't know, dude. That's just it. You're so good at being an engineerman. Maybe you couldn't be a salesman. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> Sail, sailman. <laughs> sailman. You're so good at being an engineer, man, that you couldn't be a sailor man. <laughs> sailor man. Oh, I just. Anyway, dude, your week. I kind of sounds like. To... You look at those weeks. Oh. It's probably one of the worst weeks ever. I guess. Yeah, it's kind of up there. You got the death. You got a shitty Valentine's Day. Mom didn't even call you. Mm -hmm. She called me on Valentine's Day. Is that crazy? <laughs> Nick, what's wrong with my son? You should be my son. Oh, she... <laughs> it's even worse. I was going to make a sexual joke, but what if she was just like making like, like uh, what's familial jokes? Like, Dan, I, I gave birth such... again. And it's just like, <laughs> it's only a partial. That doesn't count. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> I wish I had a real son. Yeah. Oh Oof. man, that's rough. But no, I mean you had that going on, putting a dog down, getting laid off. Uh, your entire state was set in a state of 2. emergency. 5, yeah, two point eight million people without power. Oof. Large number. Mm -mm, not ideal. Hmm. I'll say not ideal. Yeah, it's a interesting week. It, the the weirdest part is that I'm not affected by any of it. I don't feel. Yeah, you don't seem sad. That's yeah. not the word for it. You seem like you're like, fuck. That was a lot. Exhausted. <laughs> I would say is the word. Almost. I'm not even. I, Actually, I, I think you're on really the other well. side of exhausted. Like yeah. you went through it. Like you know when you don't sleep. Yeah. And then eventually yep. you're just like, not even tired anymore. Your your, well, hair, your hair's a fucking mess. Yeah, it's fucking awful. <laughs> but uh, if you don't have power and you just have a fireplace, it is so soothing. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. You're just like next to that fire. You can feel the warmth and you just, you're out. The whole family just sleeping like you're camping right in front of the fire. That's cool. That's, if, I mean, those two straight days where it's just like, poof, and you're like, you even lose track of time. You have no idea what time it is. You're like, oh shit. It's, it happened both ways where like, I thought maybe it was like four o'clock and it was like one o'clock or like, I thought it was one o'clock and it was actually like three o'clock and I was like, what's, I don't even know what's going on here. It's like, wild. No concept. Plus, you don't have hmm. no sunlight. I don't even know. Yeah. I like those days, though. Definitely an interesting, unique thing. I think the highs go with the lows, too. Like, I mean, you have to be experiencing extremes to take the high pleasures you can from such simple things as a fire. Yeah. Like, if all your power was on and everyone was fine and no one was in any state of emergency and everyone was fine, I don't think you sure. guys could... You couldn't enjoy that fire like yeah. that. No. I can't be like, hey, everybody, just like sit by the fire with me. Around the fire, but when you needed it, like to live, <laughs> like it made it almost a magical thing. Yeah, it's it brought the magic back. The magic, the simplicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the friends going out and harvesting dead trees so that they could keep warm. Like it kind of brings back Harken rust back. vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Staring at his computer, slightly looking that over. Would be amazing. I'll be off for six months now. <laughs> You'd hear people tapping on your walls. Yeah. <laughs> shouting Hello. expletives at you and telling you Hello. to come outside and bring some Hello. bring some some cloth. I need some cloth. You're like, mm. I don't trust this person. I don't think so. <laughs> Alrighty, I think. What else got anything, Nick? What what do you got, Nick? You feel That's good it. about yourself. Every day. Do you, 
Hmm. I think I'm destined for a change real soon. You think something's going to come? Do you think you're ever going to get laid off? <laughs> or you'll get fired. So, so three days ago, you know how I, I've mentioned on this podcast multiple times that I'm the anti-salesman? Mm-hmm. Yep. Funny jokes, et cetera, et cetera. Recently, my um, my desk has moved. I'm with a pod. I have five other coworkers who are not related to me. Well, your office looks manager. fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I like the plants. Thank you. The plants are old. Oh, really? Are they? Yeah. Do you water they're them? Fake. No, they're fake. <laughs> so we fake water them. <laughs> that would be an amazing like invention. invention. Yeah, like it's not can. real water. It just looks like water. People are oh, like, "Oh, it's for your fake plants." <laughs> so uh... that when they take smoke breaks, I water my fake plants with fake water. Just excuse me, I'm watering my plants. I do take fake smoke breaks. I do. Um, I do a lot at this company. But anyway, three days ago was it Tuesday or Monday? Mm-hmm. My manager, who's only five foot six, came over, and I never see him anymore. <laughs> it's, it's worth mentioning. Does he wear high tops or something? He's... No, he comes over to the cubicle wall, and like I'm like <laughs> head lifts himself up. It. And just his just his head pops above it, and he goes, "Hey, uh, Nick, uh, hearing something around the office." And I was like, oh, "Jesus, what?" <laughs> like I was just through with it because I don't deal with him usually. He was like, uh, "There's a rumor going around that um, you don't want to move up sales class because you uh, you don't think it's worth the hassle." Oh no! And I was like, oh, <laughs> "I told him my secret because I don't." Because I would have to stay an extra half hour. There's like a new manager you get with a call sheet. I got to fill out like a call sheet. I have to make like 20 dials a day. Oh now God. I only have to make 10. So yeah, he was 100% correct. And I'm trying not to sell because it's just not worth it. Excuse. I make like what, a dollar. Yeah. So he's looking at me and he's like, hey, and uh, it's probably a joke, right? It's it's probably, you're probably joking with someone and it, it just got passed around. And I was like, I was like, yeah, kind of, Rich. <laughs> I didn't even say yes. I was like, kind of. And he goes, okay, well, you know, if I heard that, maybe upper upper management heard that. So um, just keep that in mind. It's like it's something you want to work hard. You want to do good here. You want to sell. You want to do really good. And I was like, yeah, Rich, absolutely. And he was like, okay, good. Because, you know, if the higher-ups here, they might think, hey, you're not ready to move up a sales class. And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what I was doing anyway. Cool. We're in agreement. Yeah. See you, dude. But it was really funny. He was like, okay, just... Does he and stay then he your started... manager if you move up? No, he's my manager now. Oh. It was just funny. He was like, and then he started walking away, and he goes, oh, another thing. Um, anything else going on? Do you got any questions? Everything good? <laughs> I was like, I'm like, nah, we're good, Rich. Thanks. I love it. But he really <laughs> called me out, and he, those were my exact words from like two hours ago when I was telling everyone in my pod. So I don't know if one of them told or someone else heard because they were like, don't you ever want to move up? And I was like, no, I don't want to stay an extra half hour for like, what, a dollar an hour more? Fuck that. And they're like, yeah, but then eventually you can sell this and this. And I'm like, you know how much commission I got in the past two months? 130 bucks. whoop de doo Fuck them. I'm just not going to sell. And they're like, you can't do that. And I'm like, they're paying me hourly. I'm fine. And they're like, good point. <laughs> the, like, uh, I guess you can. I don't know. I've been reading in a lot, like a lot of the uh, career-based TikTok stuff, so like going through different Ooh. videos, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of people that like are in your position where they have a salesman that's making like a hundred k, for mm-hmm. God knows what reason, but it, like they, like the person that was doing the TikTok was saying that like that's gotta be bullshit. Like they have like it's a mirage. Like the person who's making one hundred k, like he's in with like somebody. He's a nepotism. Like he's somebody's like uncle or like I nephew mean, or whatever. Uh, some of the ones like Rich has been there for like 15 years I think Sweeno does and Sweeno's only been here for like 10 12 years but like he works his butt off and like I don't know he, he has a couple big probably not worth by it by like there's another two people who are related to the owner there you go nepotism mm-hmm. then you got like um Sean who's he easily makes like 120 to 130 but he he, he I think he does work really hard I don't know it's hard to tell Libby, she probably makes ninety to a hundred. She, um, I don't know. She works pretty hard, but do you think these people have like um, <laughs> mental problems? No, like but I also personality think... issues. Yeah, I would say they do. But yeah, there you go. Well, they're losers. <laughs> <laughs> Is that bad? I don't know. Like, they focus entirely on that. Way too much on it. 
Yeah, and then they also buy into their circle jerk culture, like oh, where it's yeah. like, whoa, whoa, you can't do this quote without talking to so and so about this item, and I'm like, who cares? Shut up. And they're like, whoa, you're gonna use your time off just for the heck of it, like that kind of an attitude, where they like don't want you to. Good like, there's like someone sick, and it's like, no, I just I'm gonna use my time off. Okay. Oh, creepy. You can do that. Like, yeah, yeah, creepy. there's like this cult-like thing going on. You can feel it. Yeah, that was like my interview with Amazon. <clears throat> They're freaking, there's something they off with like, ooh, all of those people. Ooh. I'm not allowed to discuss it because I signed an NDA. But they asked me the same question like five times. Would you take a break? Would I, would I what? Would you take a break? Ever. Mm, no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm oh. sorry, I can't. I can can't comment on that one, <laughs> but they looked really tired, and very obviously, they didn't ask me anything human. Like there, it was like it was like they had like a scorecard <clears throat> that they all shared, and were like, "What part of the scorecard isn't filled out?" It's this question, and I would like to ask you this question about. What's the question? You can ask the question, can you? <clears throat> I'm not allowed to. I'm not, I can't reiterate the question. Can you? I don't think so. It was all what about, like... the nouns and the verbs? You can assume what the question was, Nick. Like, you can ask me what you think the question was. Was it about, like, if you found out an employee was not working to their hardest, would you tell them? I think that one was a, var- a variant of one of the questions, yeah. All right, how about this one? Um, if you could do something without getting caught, would you do it, even if it hurt the company? Like, one of those? No, that's more interesting than any of the questions they ever asked oh, me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Come on, you gotta kind of fiddle with it. it is oh, like, let's uh, say you also took another uh, interview with Wawa, and this is what they asked you. Good, yeah, Wawa. So yeah, if Wawa was interviewing me, and they said like, "Hey Dan, you went to the the cooler, and you saw that there was only milk there, but there was supposed to be orange juice. How would you go about getting orange juice?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like that sort of question. <laughs> You'd be like, "I would just move it over," and they'd be like. <laughs> Mm, no, I do I think the answer they're looking for is that, like, oh, I would notify the CEO and make sure that, you know, future uh, oh. installments of the milk would then be uh, put in orange juice. And I'd make referendums uh, to the documents Jesus so that the documents Christ. would then uh, dictate that the person who's delivering the goods would then go to the correct location. I'd also mark it on the sheet. I'd make oh. sure there was a map, and the map actually dictated that they had to go there so that the mistake never happened again. Oh and you could replace me with a robot as soon as I finished my job. <laughs> as soon as I finished my sentence. <laughs> yeah, you have been complete. <laughs> what? That sounds terrible. It makes me want to throw up. Yeah, it's scary because I think all these jobs are becoming really corporate and they like have no, like no human logic to them. It's just like you must fill out this block and you must like you must take your little block and stick it in our pyramid, and then when the pyramid is complete, we don't need you. Like mm. you're done. Like we'll we'll just take one guy or two guys from that pyramid, and like they'll work on the next pyramid. And everyone else, you guys are just schlubs. You're gone. I keep thinking of my dad's job. Did he do really well during the last year? He did okay. I mean, like the toilet paper and the sanitizer, which he's been selling for years. Yeah. The prices were jacked through the roof. So for him to get it, it was kind of tough. And I mean, he he doesn't gouge his customers because he likes them all. So I don't think he made much, but, like, he stayed in business. But yeah. anyway, no, I thought of, like, it's the opposite kind of job. It's very feely, just talk with each other, tell old stories. Like, you know your customers, you just call them it's up at easy. random and, like, I don't yeah. know, it's like friendships. Yeah. I mean, easy, not as that like, oh, like, the level of work is easy. It's, no, it's no, easy, no, it's like, easy emotionally. Yes. But it was funny, like, uh, I still hear about customers who died and stuff, or, like, who had kids or something. My dad would be like, oh, dude, do you know uh, VFW uh, 3398? And I'm like, yeah, 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 what about him? And they're like, uh, the one dude who comes in all the time. He uh, he passed. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, dude, I knew him for years. I don't even remember his friggin' name. I know the same jokes. I know which football team is his favorite. Like, shit like that feels so human versus jobs now feel the opposite. Yeah, I I saw that front and center with one of my managers here is that he was extremely personable, like extremely, and like very nice. But 
when it came down to like business, he had no emotion whatsoever. He would do anything to make a buck. And it was very wow. strange. <clears throat> like you wouldn't have guessed it, but he was ruthless. And like by the time you figured out he was ruthless, you figured out that like maybe Yuri was part of his calculation. Yeah, he was calculating how to talk to you to get you to make you feel like you were uh, not necessarily a friend but crazy. comfortable. Yes. He was he was super intelligent and like very, you know, very much like I guess his, in his plan he was like, okay, in 5 years I'm going to retire and I'm going to manipulate everybody to get there. So I just thought of this today. It's funny you brought that up. One of my greatest skills was I can just talk to anyone. Uh-huh. I can shoot the shit. I'm a nice guy. I can crack a joke. I can make it an easy conversation, break the ice, all that kind of stuff. There's probably a job for that. And I was like, damn, that would be kind of cool if that was my job. Like a salesman. And then I was like, no, well, <laughs> no, like this is this is very, I do international. I don't talk with these people. Okay. I just give them a price. Yeah. But let's say salesman. And let's say I did get a job doing that. And let's say I was getting paid more the better I was at it. And I just cra- like sharpened my skills mm-hmm. so much that I was just literally charming people on purpose and like manipulating them and being fucking funny and nice to them mm-hmm. and using them just to get better at my job. Like eventually that just becomes sick. Like that's fucking weird. Like I, it would actually be a nightmare. If I was using my, like, just cool, like, yo, what's up, my guy? Yo, you got that shit, my guy? And, like, I don't know, just talking normal. You would people, lose but I was something. using it. Yeah. Oh, dude, like a weapon? And yeah. then it, my fun hobby that I'm good at becomes, like, a, a what I sharpen, a tool I use, something I use to just leverage people and get money and do this. And, I think that's I what certain know. people do, is that they're good at something, and then it becomes, like, hollow. It's a very, like, very strange so way of sharp, weaponizing it. Not, yeah. Yeah, I, it just occurred to me that that sounds really gross. Yeah. So, if you can make a boatload of money on that, though, I don't think I'd want to. I agree with you. Fair. Well, we've come full circle. Mm-hmm. Your week is now officially over. Yeah. Tomorrow. I don't have a meeting tomorrow, so I can just wake up. <laughs> don't have anything tomorrow. It'd be weird. I mean, it'd be completely different if I didn't have kids, because then I would just be like, I'm sleep. Like, if Piece I was single, shit. I would just, like, oh. not wake up. Ever. <laughs> what? Oh, that was good. Just I felt that one. Woo. Not wake up. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> he said it so good. Thanks. Oh, he meant it. Yeah. But... You know, I could, I'm gonna find my peace. I think I'm gonna take this week and just be like Zen. I'm gonna go Zen with it, and then I have a six phase plan that I'm just gonna implement. <laughs> uh, good on you. Yeah. Good on you, my guy. Watch me become like a millionaire for like some stupid thing I invent in this like two month period. Like and, a cat toy. Yeah. You need a metal wire. I need. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like this. Yeah. I don't know. Good luck. <laughs> be like, God He's damn it. You can call me five times tomorrow and be like, I, I just need to know if we can get this, please. Like, it's like, and be like, I don't know, nobody in the warehouse knew what this was. <laughs> Meanwhile, it didn't even leave my desk. I'm like, I forgot. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, <sighs> my entire financial future is in your hands, Nick. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to leave it on my desk and be like, damn. Hey, Dad, you got a cat, right? You want the cat toy? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Can't wait. Holy shit. Oh, good finish. Life, Strong death. finisher, Nick. Life, death, <laughs> jobs, joblessness, and oh. cat toys. That's good. Well, thanks for joining us. We got lots of socials, tons of them, tons of them. They're active all mm-hmm. day, every day. You can click here, you can click there. Subscribe. Send us uh, fan mail. Send us hate mail. Send us like uh, pictures of ourselves from outside our window. Whatever <laughs> you need. Either way, we uh, wouldn't see that window. It's the second story. <laughs> I should have told people that, but you can get on my neighbor's roof. I don't like her. <laughs> anyway, folks, we do like you. We like you a lot. Thanks for tuning in.